Okay, so the first thing we do, find LCD because we need that. What is our LCD here? Let's see. What's the number part? 24. Great, 24. That's, that's fantastic. And the variable part? Y squared. Hopefully you got 24 Y squared. Did you get 24 Y squared? Sweet. That means we need to multiply each of these fractions because right now we don't see 24 Y squared anyway. So we're going to have to make each of these denominators into 24 Y squared. Over here, I'm noticing in order to get from 12 y squared to 24 y squared, I need to multiply by a. Did you multiply by two? Okay. On the left hand side, I have an 8 y. I need to get to 24 y squared. So the number I need to multiply by to get from 8 to 24 is what? Three. That's going to be there. The variable to get from 8 y to. Y. I didn't even finish. It was awesome. Sorry. Quick. Good deal. I like it. Read my mind. See if we're, we're melding already. <laughs> no? Um, I don't think we made it that far. Got that. Good. Okay. We figure out what these fractions are. 3y times 7 gives us 21y. 3y times 8y gives us 24y squared. Again, you're just trying to find this thing. That's why we write it down. We're trying to find this thing on these denominators, and that's what's telling us what to multiply by to get that thing. So plus, to get our LCD, 10 over 24y squared. We see we have an LCD in each spot, so we did our math right. If you happen to do this and you get the wrong, or you get different things already, it does something wrong, go back and fix that mistake. You just multiply by the wrong thing, that's okay, go back and fix it. Don't keep playing at the problem thinking you got it right if these things are wrong, okay? We don't want to keep going any further. Last thing we're going to do is add them since we have a common denominator right now. We're going to get 21y plus 10. We would try to factor. It's not factorable, so you leave it just the way it is. So far, so good. All right. We're going to start making these a little bit more involved and seeing uh, some different problems we can do up here. More than one term, we're done. Let's give up. Forget this problem. Too hard. No, no, no. We can't do that. Not in math class. What's the first thing you might do? What's the first thing you do every time? Factor the denominator. Yeah, not the numerators. Don't care about the numerators. But the denominators, yes, we're going to factor that. So, first thing, let's factor that together. You, hopefully, you already have factored. The second one, not so much, but the first one, you need to be seeing that's a difference of squares, x minus 3, x plus 3. That should almost be coming automatically to you. Almost. At this point, it should be. And next week, it'll be coming automatically to you. You okay with this one? Mm -hmm. Now, we spent a lot of time finding LCD. Let's write down our LCD. LCD is the largest power of each different factor considering all of our denominators. So, what are the different factors that you see up here? X plus 3. Okay. Or X plus 3. Anything else besides X plus 3? Anything else? Do I need another X plus 3? This is just like the LCD stuff we just finished. So all your LCD has to do is be able to cover each of the denominator's factors, the factors of the denominator. So here you'd ask, does it have an x minus 3? Does it have an x plus 3? Does it have an x plus 3? Yeah, it covers both. That's fine. That's okay. What, what would be a problem, here's the problem, is if you factored it and you got the same thing twice over here, not, not spread between the fractions, but over here, then you'd have to combine them and get the square. You see what I'm saying? You've got to make it s as simple as possible before you find your LCD. That'll take care of everything for you. So here we have our LCD. You're okay on finding that, right? And now we're going to multiply by the appropriate thing to make sure we get our LCD on the denominators. On the left fraction, let's look at that. Do I need to multiply the left fraction by anything? No. It already has it. That's great. That's what we want to happen. On the right-hand side, though, we're missing something because I have an x plus 3 
I know my LCD is x plus 3, x minus 3. So what am I missing here? Perfect. Now we remember how to multiply some, some fractions, right? How we multiply fractions is extend the line, put some parentheses around these things, because that's kind of important. We need to show that. And now that we have our LCD notice, bam, 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 in three spots, we can make that into one fraction. Watch what happens here, okay? When you have your LCD and you make one fraction out of that, your LCD still doesn't change. As long as you have the same LCD here, that's great. We have 10, what's the next thing I'm going to write? Minus. Minus, and then? Five. And then? Three. X plus three. Okay. Are you okay with that so far? Do you remember talking about uh, these things a while back with, when we added and we already had common denominators? I said, don't, don't do any of this distribution stuff until you get to this step. Do you remember that? Because why? Because a lot of people, if they distribute here, they're going to forget about that minus sign. And so we're not going to distribute until we get right around here. Then we have to. We can't, we're not going to distribute denominators ever. But we will distribute the numerators, all right? Because we've got to combine like terms. So we're going to wait. We're going to do our LCD. We'll use the LCD to find equivalent rational expressions. We'll make one fraction of it. That's great. But then right here, we're going to wait to distribute to this point. Because now we can see it's not just 5. It's minus 5 that's going to distribute. Are you seeing that? The second sign will change. And again, of course, where do I look? I look right there on, on your problem on a test. If you have a minus still, I know you don't understand it. If you have a plus, I know that you distribute the negative appropriately. That's, that's where I look. It tells me a lot. So I get the 10. I get minus 5x. I get not minus 15. What do I get? Over, I'm going to leave the denominator exactly like it is. Once you find this part, unless you can simplify at the end, it stays exactly the same. Last step, what are we going to do now? So some, some like terms, we're going to get how much? Okay. Either way you want to write that, it doesn't really matter. I'll choose to do 25 minus 5x. Now the next thing you do, after you combine your like terms, are you okay on this first? That part? Yeah? Next thing you try to do is factor that. Now I see that a 5 factors out of that, or a negative 5 if you want to make the x positive like you're supposed to. However, if you do that, are you going to be able to simplify anything? No, because you're going to get 5 minus x or x minus 5 if you factor out the negative. It's still not going to simplify, so I'm going to leave it up to you. All right? If you want to, if you, you should try to factor, at least in your head, uh, because that's going to tell you whether you simplify something or not. But if you know that even if you factored it, it's not going to simplify, you can leave it. That's fine. Okay, if you factored appropriately, this would be the other option you have. You'd factor a negative 5, you'd get x minus 5 after you switch things around over x minus 3, x plus 3. That's another appropriate answer. Either one of those is appropriate because that's not going to simplify out. Do you feel good about that one? Let's try the little one. Okay, first things first, since we don't have a common denominator, the first thing we need to do is find what? Let's find the LCD. The LCD must include all the different factors up here. So can you tell me what's one thing that has to be in my LCD? X plus 1 definitely has to be there. You're right. Okay, is that the only thing? X plus 1. Okay, I got X plus 1. Oh. Seven. Okay, the 7 has to be there, that's for sure. Now, my question is, can I write, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Just the 7x plus 1 like that. 
Now, because what I've done is I've changed something from a factor to a term. Right now, the 7 has to be a factor, and right now the 7 is incorporated with a, a term there. It's not, it's, it's not okay. That's not good for us. So, if I say x plus 1 has to be there, x plus 1 has to be there by itself, right like that. Okay, that's the way x plus 1 needs to be written. Then also I'm missing something else. What am I missing? 7 and the x. I'm missing the x. That, we, we talked about this a long time ago. That x doesn't count. Not for this x. So we have 7x times x plus 1, that's our LCD. Of course we're going to use that. So let's see if we can do this thing. Over here on the right fraction, we have x plus 1. What are we missing? What do we need there? 7x. So that's going to be on both the numerator and the denominator. And over here, we already have the 7x, but we don't have the x plus 1. We're going to multiply fractions like we know how to do already. We're going to extend the line. We're going to put the dot, dot. Extend the line with the dot, dot. Make sure we have some parentheses where appropriate. Like here you have to have them, and here, and here. Ladies and gentlemen, do I now have a common denominator? Do I now have a common denominator? Does it have all the stuff there? Yes. So I have this, and that's the same. I'll probably write it a little different in the next fraction. Instead of x plus 1 times 7x, I'll write 7x times x plus 1. Since multi multiplication is commutative, it really doesn't matter how I write that. I choose to write the 7x first. On the numerator, I'm going to choose to write the 5 first. 5 times x plus 1 plus, how much is that? 14. Ladies and gentlemen, raise your hand if you're okay on making it this far. Question? Um, on so I have to show you what each of those steps Because yeah. yes. yeah. this, this is how I check to make sure, because not everyone's going to get these right. Okay. I, wish, I wish that would be the case, but it's, it never has been ever in the history of the world. Um, just kidding. <laughs> but I need to see where people are making mistakes. So I can't let just single people not uh, do that. Okay, one other question I have for you in the last oh, two seconds. Can I simplify those? Yes. Yeah. No. Shake your head no. No, oh, no. Oh, Mr. Leonard. Are you crazy? No. Can I simplify those? No. One more time, everybody. Can I simplify no. those? No. no. The reason why, do you notice that that's connected by addition? Yes. This is one of the biggest mistakes in calculus um, I see, okay? In calculus, this is one of the biggest things. People go, yay! <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you can't do that. It's connected by addition. This is actually a term and a term. You cannot, you cannot cross it out. What you can do is distribute 5x plus 5 plus 14x over, leave this the same, 7x, x plus 1. Combine the like terms, 19x plus 5, 7x, x plus 1. Okay, next question. Can I simplify these x's? No. No. No, this is actually more clear because it's a plus. Look at that's the same question I asked up here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Still connected by a plus. You cannot do that stuff till the very last step after you factor and cancel. Mm -hmm. You can't factor this, you're done on it. So you want it written like that at the bottom. That's the one. Okay.